welcome to the SAP Finance Bootcamp course series. This bootcamp is for accounts payable staff working with SAP. Do you need to be productive in a new job or role, but no time for a full or half day SAP course? This course is designed to get you or your team up and running in as little as 90 minutes. This course is broken down into 11 video lessons with live SAP demonstrations and a quick reference guide at the end to review. So this course will be 90 minutes and it'll cover various different aspects of accounts payable. How to enter and review different types of accounts payable invoices in SAP. We're going to cover entering manual payments in SAP and how to process automated payments in SAP. And after entering those different kinds of invoices, and we're going to cover invoices that are linked to purchase orders and non-purchase order invoicing, we'll then look at how to review and audit these posted invoices, basic accounts payable reporting, doing an age analysis, and managing vendor open items. When we say the open item technique in SAP, this is looking at how do we manage the vendor account for what is payable, what is due, what is not due, and what has been cleared and doesn't need any further action. So after that introduction, let's get into the course. Hi, let's have a look at an overview of the course contents for the Accounts Payable Bootcamp. So the course is broken down to a couple of different scenarios so that you can able to section up the course into various actions and topics that you can come back to later. So first we're going to cover what we're calling non-purchase order invoice entry. So in this case, we'll cover how to enter the invoice and then also how to display the document, change the documents and also cancel and reverse the document. Now, when we say non-purchase order invoice, this is where you will have an invoice that is not linked to a purchase order. So it will be a standalone invoice that is entered directly into the accounts payable subledger without a preceding logistics document. So from there, we'll jump into the what we call it purchase order invoice entry. So this is where we will have an accounts payable invoice, but the invoice is processed linked to an existing purchase order in the system. In our case, we will also demonstrate the three-way match principle where we will have a purchase order, a goods receipt, and then finally show you how to process the invoice. For these purchase order invoices, we will also cover how to display them, and I put change in here, but there's a caveat there. You can't change the purchase order invoice itself, but there are some changes you can make on the final subledger accounting posting. But you can always cancel and reverse a purchase order invoice document if needed. So we'll cover those same tasks as well. So that'll cover invoice entry, non-PO, and invoice entry for purchase orders. We'll then jump into how do we process payments? So now that we've got the invoice in the system, we'll cover how to list open invoices for vendors or list cleared invoices. How to then post a payment. We'll first cover how to post a manual payment. So typically this will be a business scenario where you have a once off payment. You've manually worked with the bank to pay the vendor and you're needing to just record this in the journal and clear the open item. So this, that's what we mean by a manual payment. Well, let's show you how to clear the accounts payable documents and clear any open invoices so that you can then review the vendor open item list and see the effect of that posting and how it matches and clears the open items. So manual payments are typically a one-off, one-by-one, case-by-case scenario. After that, we will then go into the automated payment run. So this is a, there's a single transaction in SAP called F110 or F110 called the automated payment run. And this is really quite a large transaction covering lots of different topics where you can create a payment proposal, you can then list the payment proposal and finally post the payments. The key difference with the automated payment run is that you can literally pay thousands of vendors. You can pay multiple payment methods at the same time. When I say payment method, I mean either paying an electronic funds payment or a check or a bank transfer. So the automated payment run bundles all of these concepts together so that you can then execute your payments. You can print checks if you need to. You can generate the electronic files that need to go to your bank and you can integrate to your bank from this automated payment run. But depending on how your company has implemented accounts payable will depend on how much integration there is between this payment run and your actual bank. So in this course, we will cover 
most of the aspects on how to create and execute the payment run, but not into detail on the individual integration to banks. So now that we've covered invoice entry and different types of payment, we'll then cover basic reporting. On the reporting side, we will cover how to look at a vendor account balance uh, in summary and how to then go to the individual line items that make up that vendor account balance. We will use this line item display a lot during this course because we will often use it to show what is open and then when something is cleared, what it looks like when it's been cleared. We'll also cover a basic accounts payable age analysis report. This is a useful report that will then section up the open line items into age analysis buckets, i.e. is something due or not due for 0 to 30 days, 30 to 60 days, 60 to 90 days, etc. So it will cover the reporting aspects. So once you've understood how to enter different types of invoices, make different types of payments and how to report on them, then you'll be doing really well in this boot camp to understand accounts payable. So as a final note, remember that for processing, this course applies to basic accounts payable processing. As I mentioned, the use of the automated payment run is demonstrated as an overview only. Payment details themselves from the payment run, when, especially when you integrate with your bank or when you are printing checks or international payments or local electronic payments, they differ from country to country, payment method, check electronic, and different technology to integrate with your bank. Are you using iDocs? Are you using an EDI feed? Have you got some other feed to, to your banking partner? So the integration with a bank is very specific from company to company, and there's a big security component as this is an outgoing payment. So these aspects are not covered in this course, but you will need to follow those up for your own um, local company implementation. Other scenarios like managing down payments or handling um, ERS or what SAP calls self-billing are not covered by this bootcamp. They will be covered in a more in-depth accounts payable course, but not by this bootcamp. So that being said, there's plenty for us to get through, so let's get on with the course. So now we can get started with the first section on how to enter invoices, and then we will show a demonstration. For this uh, section, we're going to look at the non-purchase order invoice. And as discussed previously, this means this invoice is not linked to a purchase order. So in order to enter this invoice, the transaction code is FP60, which is enter invoice specifically for accounts payable. And in this scenario, we're going to have an invoice for office supplies, and again, not linked to a purchase order, hence the different transaction. So for the master data, we've picked a, a vendor that we've got here. We're going to use company code 3000, uh, our US company code, and document type KR. This document type, which is the SAP standard for end invoice, this will default when you enter FP60. So as soon as you use FP60, SAP immediately knows this is for a vendor and it will default the document type KR. So this is just for the information so you can see the difference between these types of invoices and non-PO invoices. Offer supplies, p &L account we'll enter. And because we're entering a p &L account, we're going to need a cost center. In this case, we're just going to use this marketing one. And because it's an invoice, we're going to need a tax code. In this course, we're not going to get bogged down with tax details, so I'm going to use the, the I0 or AP tax exempt code and just uh, stick in a dummy tax jurisdiction code um, so that we don't have to specifically analyze taxes. In your individual company, depending on whether you have uh, Vertex in the US integrated for tax or you're in Europe using VAT will determine the tax codes and the nature of the transactions. So this course is not going to delve into the details of tax, but we do need to have those things as a minimum in the transaction. Okay, so that being said, we've got our master data, we've got our specific transaction, we know it's not going to be linked to a PO and it's going to be a KR document type. Let's get into the demonstration. So these invoices are going to be under financial accounting and instead of going to general ledger, we're going to go into accounts payable as we're going to be using the accounts payable sub ledger. It's in the document entry, FP60, first one top of the list, dedicated for vendor transactions. So let's go into FP60. You'll see that vendor is the first field lit up at the top. The SAP knows this is an invoice. So let's enter our vendor and an invoice date. Now, the thing to note is that the invoice date is really going to be the key reference for your baseline date for your payment terms. And there's the care document type we mentioned before. And just 
reiterating again that the invoice date and the posting date are different. Posting date, the accounting posting date, the invoice date for the payment terms. So let's enter an amount in there. The header section, and this is the uh, vendor uh, invoice amount. Then we've got our tax code section. So in this case, I'm going to go for calculate tax automatically, even though it's on zero. And you'll notice as soon as you enter the tax code, the header section falls out in the system. So now you can review the vendor details to make sure you've got the right vendor and address. And you can also see a snapshot of the vendor bank account details. And this is for company code 3000. So I suggest filling out the header section first before going to line items. The line items, we can enter a p and account. For office expenses, this is the debit. Now we can enter our amount. And we're just going to make that balance with the top as we've not got any tax. Tax jurisdiction code for the US. We can get that in. And uh, you'll notice the tax code defaults from the top line to the bottom, so you don't have to retype it in. And as this is a PL account, we need to enter a cost center. So we'll scroll along, find our cost center field, cost center, because we have a PL account. And then to finish off, let's uh, add some text in there describing our um, invoice. Maybe some printer ink as an example. And therefore, we'd have the, uh, the debit and the credit side of the transaction. When I press enter, notice this net due date warning message is really just telling us that according to the invoice date of the 1st of January, this uh, invoice is overdue already. And that I'm acknowledging as part of this process. But the key difference here in an AP invoice is that you can uh, also look at payment details. So besides seeing that the transaction is balanced in a similar way to a journal where we've got our debits and credits balanced, we can now look at the payment details tab. So here you can see this baseline date has been copied over from the invoice date. And the due date is going to be based on the baseline, the invoice date itself. So invoice date copied to baseline date, we apply some payment terms, which in this case is 30 days. So the net due date is the end of the month. So it's just important to understand how those dates are used compared to a general ledger journal. So we can simulate this transaction, just have a final review of our debits and credits. And as you can see in SAP, as per the usual style, the posting key is now taking over from the debit credit words, the way SAP tracks. We've got a balanced transaction and therefore we can go ahead and post our first non-PO invoice. And the system comes down and reports now there's the document number in the 19 series range. So you have just successfully posted your first non-PO invoice. Congratulations. So now that we've learned how to enter an invoice, we're now going to look at what some of the other options are, for instance, display and change. So we're going to look at um, FB03 display, FB02 and change. So the scenario here is if you needed to uh, display and update the text in an invoice potentially, or one new option here is you can actually change the payment terms for an AP invoice. And for the master data, we can use an AP invoice posted in a previous lesson or in this lesson, I think I'm just going to enter a new invoice for us to be able to, to mess around with it. So let's uh, go invoice and then see what we can do with it. So under the document side, yeah, normally you can have your change and display transactions and then the reverse over here. But let's actually just start with entering a new invoice to give us something to uh, fresh to start with. So let's hit that FB60 again. We'll enter a vendor, enter a posting date, get a reference, and uh, get this KR document going. And, uh, and the reason why I'm just entering a fresh document is so we can then display change and reverse it without interrupting the previous test. Remembering again, when you enter your tax, you can then see the header information, company address, bank details. Let's just enter our p &L account again uh, for the debit. And as it's a p &L account, we need a cost center. So we've got a zap in our cost center over here. And uh, put in some text for a test invoice here so we can uh, change it and reverse it. So let's um, enter the document. We get our net due date warning. Not a problem for that, just means it's overdue and let's post. So now we've got the document posted, we can actually branch very quickly to display by clicking document display, or you can navigate to FB03. Now that we display the document, you can now see the, um, the debits and the credits and the amounts. And um, if you go to the header of the document, similar to a general ledger, one of the main items you can see here is again the document type. So you know this is a vendor invoice and you can see who entered it. Very important from an audit perspective, who entered it, 
what date did they do it, what transaction was it, and what time did they do it. So always remember document header and display is a very important way that you can audit how a document or an invoice got into the system. And if we double click on an individual line item to drill down, we can uh, do some more changes to the system. If you're in display, everything is gray. You can't really change anything. But if you use the, uh, the pencil icon, you can then jump into display mode. So in this case, we're looking at the uh, payment terms here, but you'll see everything is gray. We can't change anything at this stage. So what I want to do then is to go into change mode by clicking on the pencil. This is FB02. And now you'll see we have the fields that have turned white can be changed. You can't change the amount, but you could change the discount base as an example if the payment terms are based on a discount. So in this case, I do want to change the payment terms from the um, 30 days that we had here. Let's make it 45 days and press enter. The system gives you a warning that you're changing the terms of payment, but that is okay. If I press enter there, the system has now changed to 45 days. So this is an example of something that you can change in an invoice that you normally wouldn't be able to change or have access to in a standard general ledger journal. So let's go back to the overview here. And then let's, um, for instance, put in some text. So I'll go in here and I can update the text. Um, it doesn't affect the posting itself, but just to show you some of the other fields that you could change um, in an AP invoice in change mode. Payment terms, one of the main ones, or some text if you need to. And if I go on the vendor side again, you can see there's also text for the vendor line item as well as text on the expense line item. So in this case, I'm going to enter some text against the vendor line item so we would see it in the open items. And as this is a manual invoice not linked to PO, I can put some approval comments as an example. So let's save that and then uh, branch out of that document that we've just created, displayed and changed. Changes have been saved. So now we can know how to display and change a document. Let's have a look at what happens if we uh, then look at a reversal transaction. So if I close up the document entry now and go under document, just to show you this, those are the display and change transactions. If you don't use the pencil and if you don't drill down directly, you can always use them directly from the menu if you need. But, uh, we want to go into the um, reverse side. So right now you'll see that if we navigate to reverse, it's a separate menu path and down the menu where we can then find reverse. So reversal uses a new transaction called FB08, and this is to reverse an AP invoice document. So in this scenario, you may need to manually reverse an existing AP invoice, maybe it was posted in error. So we'll use the document that we posted in the previous lesson. And just remember, when you reverse or cancel, SAP will not delete the existing posting. It preserves the audit trail, and you get a new contra document that is posted that nets out the original document. So this is not specific to that reverse transaction. So you'll see the reverse has its own menu path. I now go into reverse FB08, we can get into the reversal transaction. So this is where we enter our document number that we had just posted for the company code. And let's pick a reversal reason. The most common one is this 01 reversal in the current period. And I always recommend displaying the reversal document before you actually reverse it so that you can make sure that you've got the right document. So let's click display reversal. And here we can see the invoice that we just posted. And um, there's our line item, there's our vendor. Oh, let me just drill down there. You can see, remember the comment that we put in here there about the approval. So let's go back out of this one. And now that we know it's the right invoice, we can simply click the post button and then that'll then actually save and post a contra journal for this document. So here we can see is a new document number in the 17 series that has been posted. And if I now branch to document display, we can actually have a look at that document. There's the reversal document with the 17 series code. And if I look at the header of that document, you'll then see specific information. There are debits and our credits. So this is a contra, as you can see. Reversal document, this branches us to the linked reversal document. So you'll see here, this is the original 19 series document that we posted. So this was the original invoice. And we use that reversal document to branch to it. So jumping back now, we can then get back to the reversal document and we can see the contra on the PL account where we've now got a debit and a credit. And on the header, again, you can see the reversal document number that it is linked to. So it's always clear 
and you can see that there's a different document type for the reversal, the KA versus the KR document type. So if we just branch back and double click back again, then we're back to the reversal entry transaction. So that's it for AP document reversal.